Welcome to the Fiji Symposium 2019 in Cairo, Egypt, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today, Mr. Jeremy Grant, who is Managing Director of Technology and uh, Business Strategy for Venable. Welcome to the studio. Thanks. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, the FIDO Alliance. Now, uh, I understand that you're involved with, the, uh, with this. What, what, uh, what is it? What does it do? So FIDO Alliance is an effort to transform the way that authentication works uh, in the digital ecosystem through better standards. Uh, for years, we've been using passwords or perhaps a second uh, factor like a one-time passcode that might be texted to your phone, uh, which is both a terrible user experience and also increasingly hackable and fishable. Uh, so FIDO is a standards effort that is unifying uh, major players in technology, in financial services, uh, in hardware and software, uh, in high assurance cloud services to develop a new set of standards that are globally recognized that can be used uh, to, in some cases, augment passwords or ideally replace them through what I would say uh, one-touch, uh, single-gesture authentication, leveraging a mix of biometrics, uh, matched locally on device, uh, tied to a cryptographic key pair that then logs somebody in very securely behind the scenes. And how can FIDO authentication improve the uh, user experience of digital financial services? Well, the user experience today has been quite lousy. I think most people are today trying to manage dozens of usernames and passwords. And particularly when you're looking at where commerce is happening these days on the mobile device, uh, trying to actually enter in uh, a so-called complex password uh, isn't particularly uh, a good user experience. Or if we're asking somebody to then go get a, a code from someplace else as a second factor, I think about the last thing anybody wants to do after entering one password is then go find a second password. Uh, so from the user experience, what FIDO does is it basically leverages the fact that most devices today, be they running on the Android operating system, uh, Windows, uh, the Apple operating system, all have some common elements that are in place. Uh, the first is, and if I'll pull out my Android smartphone, uh, inside this is a very secure chip, the trusted execution environment. They can create and secure and protect cryptographic keys. Uh, this device also has several biometric sensors. It's got a fingerprint sensor, a camera that can do face and iris. And so we move from trying to enter passwords to essentially just leveraging a biometric as the first step, hold it up or put my finger on the device to then, and that's only matched by the way on the device. It never goes off you know, the device for privacy and security purposes. And that then unlocks a cryptographic key behind the background that logs you in. So we're talking about single gesture, biometric enabled authentication uh, that requires almost no effort from the user and is exponentially more secure than other types of authentication that are out there. And in terms of uh, the, the, the big picture, what do you think the key factors are that governments and financial services sectors should consider when putting in place a strong authentication system for the digital financial services? Well, I think the first thing to keep in mind is you need to have an authentication strategy. We know today by looking at some of the studies that we see year after year from third parties that roughly 80% of breaches each year are targeted at stealing uh, uh, people's passwords or other credentials. So if you're suddenly bringing more financial services online where the risk model is such that there's uh, oh, money you could steal, uh, people are gonna come after the passwords first of all. And so if you're not focusing on a strategy around strong authentication, uh, that's gotta be, uh, or that's gonna create real problems. Second, uh, you need to make it easy for the consumer to use because if there's one thing we've seen across the globe is that if you make it too hard, people just find ways to get around it or they won't embrace the service. Uh, the third, I'd say, is that privacy matters. Uh, there are architectures that will focus on warehousing millions of biometrics. Uh, my experience as a security professional has been those are quite hard to protect. And so if you can leverage some of the on-device uh, matching capabilities that give you the convenience and security of biometrics without the security risk, uh, that goes uh, a long way. And fourth, I'd say standards are very important. The, the real value that FIDO provides is regardless of what device you're using, FIDO standards are built in at the chip level, at the browser level, and so it provides a very easy way to integrate multiple biometric modalities and multiple approaches to authentication backed by a global standard now recognized by the ITU and the World Wide Web Consortium. So do you think we're ever going to reach a, a, an authentication utopia or, or is, are there always going to be uh, issues uh, that uh, need to uh, be addressed? Well, I, utopia is a, a bit of a loaded term. I, I dream of that, I suppose. But I think what, what's exciting to me about FIDO is not only that the technology is good, that the security is good, but that it's backed by global standards that are basically created and embraced by a who's who of technology providers out there. And so when I've, having worked in this space 20 years and been part of other attempts to try and get beyond the password that have struggled uh, because, um, 
they were just too complicated, they weren't a uh, delight for the user, uh, they were too costly. Uh, this is a way to leverage standards in a way that's affordable, that's great for security, great for privacy, and most important, really easy to use. And how long are we talking about here? Well, what you're seeing right now is it's, I think this, this next two years is actually going to be uh, transformational across the globe in terms of how you see FIDO adoption. Uh, Microsoft has pledged to build it into Windows. Uh, so if people are logging in, say, with Windows Hello on a Windows 10 machine, that's backed by the FIDO standards. Um, you have seen Google bake it in both at the browser level uh, with Chrome as well as right into the Android operating system. So the, the Galaxy phone I was taking out before, there are a number of sites that I can now leverage FIDO to log in. Uh, from the user experience, it's just a simple biometric match, but the cryptography behind the scenes is really where the security value is. Uh, and Apple, who doesn't always show up at standards, uh, uh, parties from, uh, has actually recently announced uh, they've started to release code for a WebKit, which is their open source uh, code for Safari that they're baking it into the browser. So already today, when you look at a uh, number of major banks across the globe, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Dropbox, major cloud sites, uh, Amazon as well, that have started to bake FIDO in, I think what you're going to see over the next 18 to 24 months is a whole new uh, list of brand names that are popping up that are defaulting to FIDO authentication rather than username and password uh, because of its security and its ease of use. Finally, you, you trekked all the way here from Washington and wanted to find out what's uh, the incentive for you to be here. Oh, well, I've, uh, my background is I've worked at the intersection of identity and cybersecurity for more than 20 years, uh, including quite a bit of it in the standards world. Uh, I first got to know the folks at the FIDO Alliance when I was actually running uh, the National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace, which was an Obama uh, White House initiative uh, focused on the topic we're talking about today. Uh, and I ran the identity standards team at NIST. And when I left government a few years ago, um, one of the ways that you know, I viewed FIDO was it was the industry response to what uh, the White House had called for. Uh, for industry to come together and partner with government to create uh, new interoperable standards-based ways uh, to better address identity online. And so this has been a deep passion of mine for more than 20 years in terms of how can you leverage good identity uh, to enable uh, new types of commerce that you cannot deliver online without trusted identity. And the work that FIDO is doing in the broader community of not just companies but also governments around the globe uh, who have been part of the alliance and contributing to it uh, is uh, really the best story out there today in terms of what's going on in the identity ecosystem. Jeremy Grant, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. <laughs>